Hello, today I have another Bassius Power Bank, the winner of a poll I put out, which kind of surprised me. I really expected the Shar Geek to win, but it looks like that will have to be the next one. Overall, this is a fairly heavily reviewed device since it is a couple years old, but that means it has stood up for some time and in general it looks like there are some things to investigate. In general, we will find out if this power bank holds up. I will put it through the All Things One Place testing gauntlet to find out if it can achieve top marks. We'll go through each of the features and functions of this power bank to see if it meets the claims on the box. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? These videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, the power bank will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities and help you make an informed buying decision. This is my third power bank. Although I started testing some others, I started with the Bang with some really impressive options, so there will be a lot to check if this can keep up. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to catch these videos. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to the Patreon super button and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. This is the Bassius Portable Laptop Charger 65 Watt Power Bank Model BS 30KP365 30,000 milliamp hour with 5 ports. The names are not amazing on these things. A picture tells a thousand words. Upon opening up this power bank, we can see the plastic wrap power bank is of a rectangular shape. It is actually fairly large. The power bank comes with a 100 watt capable USB C to C cable. These aren't bad. Tested in the USB cables video if you linked in the description if you're interested. And it comes with the usual stickers and a user manual. These are hidden in the bottom though. The user manual is what I call functional. I know this device isn't brand new, so it doesn't have the new nice infographics that talk about what each USB port can do and how power sharing works. It does talk about in the text the confusion of how things plug in and what is supposed to happen. Lots of things to check, and maybe we'll all find out some of this just doesn't work at all. The power bank seems solidly built. It bears the CE mark for its compliance testing. It lacks UKCA since it was released before that was required. It doesn't have any specific US or Canada safety listings, but for a power bank I'm not sure there's a requirement to have it yet. This is what is expected for markings, but nothing extra here. Let's get into some weights. The cable that comes with this weighs 24 grams. The packaging for this product weighs 106 grams. Not terrible. The power bank weighs 532 grams. In comparison with other tested products, this is not bad. If you consider the claimed capacity of this power bank, it's actually on the lighter side. I wonder if it'll hold up. In terms of comparisons with other tested power banks, it is differently shaped, but basically halfway between the blade and the anchor's more square profile. I pulled this from the Amazon listing. They gave a huge list of devices that this thing can charge. The claimed devices include things like the Steam Deck and lots of laptops, tablets, and phones. I noticed that it doesn't mention the Nintendo Switch. Either way, that's a lot of devices. It is interesting that it has so many input port options. I read through many reviews and found that the labels tend to confuse people, the 18,000 milliamp hours and the battery capacity versus the usable capacity, which they don't really tell you. And then there's some quality control issues. This power bank has a shaky history. This power bank has five total USB ports for output and two more for input. Well, technically one isn't a USB port. We get four USB A ports and one USB C port, along with a USB mini B and an iPhone lightning connector for charging. The USB C is the fastest way to charge though. The USB A ports support various protocols, most popular the quick charge or QC modes which you can get a maximum of 30 watts from. The QC port also has 5, 9, 12, and 20 volt modes. The QC port is only active if no other USB-A ports are being used, or the USB-C port. The USB-C port is more modern and much more popular power delivery output. The power delivery specification allows each USB-C port to deliver fixed output voltages or variable output voltages, depending on your needs. In this case, the power bank provided 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltage modes. Not bad, and in line with most modern devices still. The other modes available in the PPS or programmable power supply mode. This varies the output voltage to maximize charge efficiency. The port offers a PPS mode of 16 volts and can go up to 65 watts. This should be able to do 5 amps and 11 volts, but I'm not sure if the protocol is implemented exactly as needed for super fast charging Samsung devices. On every plug and unplug, the power delivery does renegotiate. In this case, plugging in a USB-A device will cause the USB-C to renegotiate. The same 
same goes for the QC capable USB A port. Charging seems to be disabled when any outputs are enabled. This power bank does not have any pass through capability, so one mode only. This obviously means it can't be a uninterruptible power supply either. The voltages all stay within the tolerances of the USB power delivery specification, which is a nice thing to see. Something that isn't so nice to see is the bubble display. I can almost never read this display, especially in bright lighting. I don't know why this would make it past the proof of concept stage. You really can't read the display. Also, it looks bad. The display is also inaccurate by a fairly large margin. The voltage it displayed was always about 5% low and the current was also low by about 5%. This device does not have an always on output voltage. If the load is light enough, the device will turn off the output after a few seconds. There is a detection though, so any new plug-in will turn the device on. I didn't see any press and hold functionality. Pushing the power button again won't wake the power port back up either, so you do have to unplug and plug it back in. Power banks do some kind of marketing nonsense when it comes to the battery capacity. In this case, 30,000 milliamp hours, which is a big number. I didn't look into how many cells are in this thing and it doesn't really matter, as long as it works. I'm not going to go into a ton of depth here, but if it doesn't make sense, ask. Basically, the unit of energy we care about is watt hours, like your electricity bill. Talking about a capacity in terms of milliamp hours essentially only gives you a piece of the picture, and since the voltage of the battery is a variable, it tells you nothing. What we need to know is watt hours. Thankfully, Bassius is pretty upfront about providing this number with the power bank and even a little efficiency of power conversion target. This is a pretty good example of at least providing the information somewhere. So we have the battery capacity of 114 rated watt hours. This is a big battery. I measured the output capacity at 98 watt hours. With the losses for converting the voltage to the output, you end up with about 86% of the stored energy being sent to the output. This is actually quite good. Unfortunately, the charging, which we will get into, isn't so great. So the overall system efficiency with a 90% efficient power adapter ends up around 68%. So using this power bank wastes 32% of the energy you pay for to charge your device. That number will be worse with less efficient power adapters. This is not the worst if you need portable power. If everyone used this power bank though, you would need 32% more grid capacity for no benefit at all. Charging is a bit worse than the claims because the charging was too slow. I gave it a few charge discharge cycles and each time it took four hours to finish charging. The claim is 2.5 hours. It drops from 60 watt charging fairly quickly, then continues to decline and basically trickle charges for the last two hours. The first time charging, the display does not show the charge capacity correctly. It says 100% and it was still charging at 40 watts. I could not get the iPhone charger port to work at all. The micro USB port only charged at 5 watts, so over a day to get this thing fully charged at that rate. There is also the issue of air travel. Specifically, the airlines limit the battery capacity you can carry on a plane to 100 watt hours per pack. This means that this pack with its 114 watt hour rated capacity could get you in trouble with the airline security because this adapter can't fly. I do think it would be nice if the usable watt hour capacity was stated as well. I doubt anyone will do this because it is a variable, but an average value could be listed or a greater than some number of watt hours. Stating the capacity honestly will let people calculate real use times instead of expecting 114 watt hours and getting 98 usable. The thermals on this power bank during both the charging and discharging stayed fairly stable, around 45 degrees C while charging and 51 degrees C while discharging. Some people would call this hot, but really not out of line with other power banks. In this case, the larger battery cells should easily stay cool at the 60 to 65 watts this is capable of charging or delivering at. In terms of the marketing claims, this power bank does great. We know the real capacity of this device and the claim charging capabilities from some data online. This device meets the basic marketing claims of charging times for devices. You'd be working for several days with this power bank. The power bank can run for about two hours with a 50 watt load. This is pretty good if you consider the relative size. It has quite a bit of energy stored away. On to the overload testing. As with any power adapter, we can push this power bank to its limits to see how many watts it can deliver. We are expecting the device to safely shut down in the case of a situation like a short circuit or a broken cable. I went ahead and tested the various ports and options on this adapter to find several overload limits. 
It looks like they are each within a reasonable number. After any overload, the power bank requires you to unplug and replug in the port. There is no recovery. Okay, overall, this power bank has one major issue I found, the slow and relatively inefficient charging. Another minor issue is the resetting unplug and unplug of USB-C or QC devices. The USB-A ports tend to stay on for charging lower power things though. Everything else in this bass is 30,000 milliamp hour power bank does pretty good. The many USB-A ports are great for charging lots of 5 volt devices. I can see this being very useful for keeping a GoPro active for a long period of time, or charging lots of phones at a moderate speed, or just having lots of energy and a reasonably lightweight, for the amount of energy, power bank. The USB-C port can deliver the full 65 watts no problem, but not with any other devices connected. The output capacity is near 100 watt hours and that's really good. If the charging was a little more efficient, I'd really like this power bank. The price point is reasonable, around 80 US dollars as of 2023. It still isn't cheap, but it does go on sale fairly regularly. I expect the device to last a long time and be capable of a lot of charge and discharge cycles, especially since the battery never really has to work that hard. The visual display is pretty bad. One question power banks always have is about travel on a plane or not. This adapter is over 100 watt hours, so it cannot travel on a plane. Don't confuse watts for watt hours. One thing I didn't see on this power bank is a US or Canada safety listing. This is a new category, so you will start to see this on power banks. It looks like this one doesn't have that specific mark though, but it does have the CE mark. After all that, I leave the decision up to you as to whether or not you want this one. It is a couple years old in terms of design, has questionable Amazon review stats. There's some one stars in there to check out though, mostly DOA issues and very quick failures. For me, this adapter will most likely spend a lot of time around the five to 10 watts powering more basic USB-A devices. I've had it for six months now and it holds its charge fine, but maybe I got lucky. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to look at this Philips Hue light bulb system, but I may change that out for another power bank or one of the teardown videos. There's a schedule on my website of upcoming videos. I'm still working on the rating system for these power banks. Check the description for affiliate links. Thanks again and goodbye.